Hello, and welcome to another nail art tutorial with me, Polish Procrastination. Today I'm going to show you how I did these Hey Hey themed nails. These nails were done for a Disney themed nail art collab, where this month's theme was sidekicks. I spent a long time thinking about which sidekick I would pick, and eventually, after much deliberation, I realised that I had to choose the best of all the sidekicks, which is Hey Hey from Disney's Moana. For my base colour, I am using this stunning teal flaky polish from Prism Polish called Namu. It just seemed so perfect for Moana themed nail art. It just feels like looking into the sea. Since this is a freehand tutorial, I need my favourite tiny brush, which is the Nail Arts and Cosmetics Fine Liner slash Detailer brush in size 2. As I normally do, I've already got my two base coats on, my Int Ready for Takeoff, my Peel Off base coat, and my OPI Natural Nail base coat. So to start this look, I'm just applying a few coats of Namu. It's a jelly polish, so it seems quite sheer to begin with, but it builds up so nicely and the depth it gives you is just so gorgeous. So with the setup I've got, the way my camera's set up, I was having a really hard time painting my nails, as you can probably tell because I seem to get it everywhere every time I do this. You think with the fact that I paint my nails almost every day and have done for the last year, year and a half, I would have figured out how to do it without getting it everywhere, but apparently that is not the case. <laughs> One day I'll probably figure it out, but until then there's acetone and a clean up brush, it's fine. Once I've got my desired opacity, I'm just topping it off with a layer of SE Speed Setter top coat. And I'm doing this because I'm going to put acrylic paints over the top. If you're a big nail art fan, you'll probably know that when you have a nice dry top coat and then you put acrylic paint on, you can just rub the acrylic paint right off or scratch it off. Since I'm doing freehand nail art, I like to use reference photos to give me something to work from. In this particular case, I'm going to use this image of Hey Hey swallowing a rock. When I'm doing freehand nail art, I never really have a plan of action for how I'm going to do it. I usually just dive in and see where it takes me. In this particular case, I am just going to start with the rock. The reason that I chose to start with the rock is because it would decide where I'm going to place everything so I could get the heights right and make sure it fits kind of in the centre of the nail. The main problem with diving right in is often you decide you're going to place the paint somewhere and you start and you get your outline and it's looking really great and you keep going and then you realise you've just kind of gone off the side of the nail or you're off centre or you're too low and that can be really frustrating because you just have to like wash it all off and start again. If you do have to wash it all off, if you're using acrylic paint with a top coat underneath, you can just take like a cotton pad soaked in water and just wash it off and dry the nail and it more or less leaves no trace. And then I just work down from the rock, kind of fill it in, give it a basic shape and I'll come in and do the detail kind of towards the end and then I'm working down from the beak and then I add the shape of the comb and the neck and fill everything in from there. One thing I do a lot is I put the details in even before I filled everything in. Often the details end up getting covered over, um, but the reason I put them in is to help me kind of gauge where everything should be. For example, you can see that I'm putting the wattles in. These are the dangly bits that are next to the rooster's beak. And yes, I did have to Google that to find out what they were called. Once I've got everything outlined, I like to go in and fill it in just with solid colour. I tend to go with the lightest colour first so that I can build on top of it. So the thing that really takes this nail art and makes it look like hey hey are those big giant eyes of his. However, drawing circles upside down is very hard and you can see that I made a right mess of it. So after I vaguely fix it off screen, 
I take my handy cuticle pusher, which I'm pretty sure I use for everything other than sorting out my cuticles. And I'm just going to use one end to scratch off the mistakes I made and make it look a bit more circular. And once I've got the eye in, I start filling in everything else. Another thing that I do a lot in my freehand nail art is that I will blend colours while they're still wet. So I'll put one colour on and then I'll go and I'll take the second colour that I want and I'll put that on and because they're both wet I just kind of smoosh them together until I get like a nice gradient. When I paint, I'm quite um, impatient is probably the word. So I like to be able to just do everything straight away. So that's why I like to blend when everything is still wet rather than kind of adding gradual bits of colour over the top. There are people who can do all their freehand nail art with just polish and I am in complete awe of them. I am definitely not one of them. I've tried to do nail art with just polish and it just doesn't suit my style of painting. Which, as I'm sure you can see, is honestly just kind of chaotic. Once I feel like I've got most of the base done, I'm just going back and picking out those details that I'd put in earlier and, as I said, covered over. I'm just adding a little bit of black here, pick out some feather detail. And then finally I'm just moving back to the rock. This is not the most interesting part, there's not a lot to say about it, however it's quite satisfying for me to watch, maybe it's not as satisfying for you to watch, but I just really like how it starts off looking just kind of grey blob with lots of little splodges and I just keep blending and eventually it turns into something that looks like an actual rock. I never really know how my nail art's going to go until it's done. So I, I spend a lot of time thinking, oh this looks terrible, this looks really awful, it's not going to work, it doesn't look nice, and then I'll add a few small details in and then I'll top coat it and it will just look exactly how I'd imagined it. Sometimes it doesn't, sometimes it goes completely wrong. To finish it off I'm just going in with a kind of brownie colour to make it look a little bit more worn. Finally, I'm just adding some shading on his body to make him look a little bit more 3D. Once I'm finished with the design and I think the paint's dry, I just top coat it with my SE speed setter again. I do always try and top coat it quite gently though, in such a way that the brush is not making a lot of physical contact with the nail, it's just the top coat that's in contact. This helps when the paint's not quite as dry as I think and prevents it from smudging without the use of a smudge free top coat. And here's the final completed look. It's a very ridiculous look. It's probably not a great everyday look, but it makes me very happy. If you enjoyed this, let me know down in the comments. Uh, if there's anything else you would like to see, also please let me know. And thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you all later. Bye!